Hey everybody, how are you folks doing today? Happy Thursday. So I had this idea to try and leave some music on in the background just for fun. I don't know how well that's going to work, but I was playing around now that this uh, looks so spiffy. Right, I should be able to add some, uh, add some more stuff to it here. Let's do this one. I'm going to do the uh, current song. There we go. I think I can put this like over here. I don't know if I need the current song though, do I? Yeah, I think I'll take that part out. So just for fun, is that is that readable there? You kind of see what that is. I found this little uh, OBS current song app. I found it goes and reads your Spotify to see what the song is. It's pretty cool. Let's take that out. All right, and then I just got to restart this. Pretty cool, like it, it puts a little text file here, and then OBS reads that text file for the source, and then it shows up, so. Alright, cool. Let's leave that running while we go here. So, how you folks doing today? Happy Thursday. Ooh, Twitch Inception. There we go. Let's take a look at our, our schedule here. I've got a, a couple thoughts in mind for you folks that we can talk about. So we'll see. We'll see what you folks think. Alright, let's be logged in here. So I have I have plans. And I did get the image thing working. I don't know if you saw I posted in uh, um, the Discord about it last week. We were real close to getting the image thing working. Uh, turns out there's an even easier way to do it, uh, which I think is, is better anyway than trying to get it to load inside of an image itself. We'll take a look at that. And I'm so sorry, I did not get your projects created. I've been uh, apparently backed up way farther than I thought. I've been working, getting everything caught up, and it is not there yet, um, which I apologize for. But hopefully the proposal I have will make up for it. So let me know. Let me know what you think. And and do tell me if the music is too loud now. I've got it, I think, quietly behind the scenes, but it's hard for me to tell sometimes. Maybe I'll turn it down just a little bit. I don't know, like, how quiet is too quiet. It might be too quiet. I don't know. All right, so let's take a look at our schedule and see what we got here. That open or do I? There we go. All right. So we might go to version four of the syllabus here. We'll see. Ooh, ads! Yay! That's the problem with Spotify. I don't have Spotify Premium, so okay. So a couple things. So let's take a look at our outcomes. How well we have gotten through the topics here. So we're going to describe how web service requests are processed, overall architectural web applications, including the role played by supporting services such as operating systems, web servers, browsers, and naming services. That's DNS, the naming service. We didn't talk too much about that. I figured you would have done more of that in like the networking class, but maybe that was incorrect. Um, the model view controller application design model, specific implementations for PHP and Java. We've done PHP and Java web applications that can process web form data, including list processing and table displays. We've done that. Um, describe the role of Java servlets and server pages within the MVC design model. We've done create web app, Java web applications that utilize expression language, common items from the JSP standard tag library. We've done PHP and Java web application code that can manage session data, cushy, cookies, you, utilize a relational database for basic transactions, read, update, insert, delete. Yeah, we've done that. Um, missing a comma there, and usually we call this create instead of insert, but that's okay. No big deal. Uh, PHP and Java web application code that can send mail messages. Again, we, we talked about that. I said, hey, here's where you go read about it. Um, it's really straightforward, but then you have to create an account and have a password set up for most of these things. And that's probably more than we want to do right now in actually setting these things up. Um, you can just go make a, like a burner Gmail account, and it's relatively straightforward. But I didn't want to do anything that was showing a password um, on screen here. So uh, just with, with this particular format. So, but I figure you, you folks can, can get that one without too much trouble. And common web client side technologies, HTML5, jQuery, JavaScript. This one I thought was a little odd because we do that in our JavaScript programming course. And we have an HTML5 programming course, right? So that I thought was a little weird. Um, like the whole jQuery library is fantastic and, and great. Um, but we don't even really have time to get into that much ourselves. But different types of requests are generated. Like, you can send an AJAX request with some JavaScript. Sure, we can do that. 
Um, it describes basic implementation methods for web application authentication and security. We talked a little bit about authentication and security as well. Uh, we mostly did that in the PHP side, uh, but the, the concepts still apply over in Java land as well. Excuse me. All right. So I think we're done. We've done pretty good here. Um, on our schedule then, the last thing we had, oh my goodness, here we go, is talking about the DOM, AJAX, and frameworks. So there's a really cool framework called the Spring Framework that's very popular um, that works very well in Java land. I don't think we have lots of time to actually get into how to use it, but I'll, I'll show you the guides. And it's, it's relatively straightforward to getting up and running, uh, but we, we're not going to do our own Spring project or anything. Uh, we'll talk a little about Ajax and how we can set up, um, I think like endless scrolling is probably the best example of this. Right, where you hit a web page and things load and then as you scroll down something triggers a request asynchronously right using ajax and it's going to modify the existing dom of your page so you don't go to a new page it just it's up it's updating the dom in your existing page to make it look like oh hey there's much more content now and that's kind of how those go hand in hand so a lot of times we'll use that for stuff like endless scrolling so you notice like if you go to twitter you can just scroll forever Right, and hey, let's take let's take a look. Why not Twitter? Take a look at my Twitter feed. See what we got here. So I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna view the source here in a second. Let's let the initial load happen here. Come on. So I've got an initial page load. Notice I've got a scroll bar. It can scroll a decent amount down, but there is an end to it. So we're going to uh, view the page source. This is probably going to be really ugly looking, but that's okay. Oh, goodness. Yeah, this is all JavaScript. Right, that's loading. Am I not looking? Might not be the right... Could be the right page. Why am I not getting more of this? Here's all their styling, that's fine. No errors. Yeah, we can't even see any of that. Oh, here it is, it's all there. That's where all my tweets are. Look at that, here we go, that's all of it. All in here. Yeah, this loading. Looks like it just updated there. Is that all the tweet data? Looks like that's probably all the tweet data. One more scripts. Alright, but the idea here is as we scroll down, the source itself is going to change. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, it just loads more, and now I can scroll even farther down. So let's take a look here so we can see if anything changed. Anything, probably got a little wider here, right? Maybe got a little wider. Hard to tell exactly. And ours won't be quite as fancy as Twitter. Nothing else over there. Alright, cool. But we'd be able to see that we're updating stuff in the DOM here. And as you just scroll down, it just keeps loading more. So it's got some JavaScript that when you hit somewhere near the bottom or to the bottom, it, you know exactly where, um, it will load more content for you. Right, so that's uh, what we can look at playing with. Uh, we'll do a little bit of Ajax, uh, a little bit of DOM manipulation there, see what we can get going. Uh, and again, uh, endless scrolling is not a requirement at all for your final project, and you know it's no big deal there. So if it just want you to see how some of this stuff works is, is kind of the idea here. So let's fire up NetBeans and we'll go find our project. We'll talk a little bit more about the image handling from the database there. I'll show you how I fixed that up. And this is on the Java side. The PHP example in the textbook doesn't save things to database, but I think you could do the similar process um, through their example. So if you, if you look up, they have a whole chapter on dealing with images and file uploads, and they just drop them in a local directory on the web server which could work, and you know, for our project that's fine too, uh, but 
but doesn't work for any web application that needs to scale, right? If you ever have more than one web server, obviously you can't have the files local. So let's see, that was our little Hello World example, I think, right? If you just kept working on Hello World. I got a close window of the projects here too, sorry. Well, hopefully you have your coffee and things are going well. And now if you put an emote in chat, it shows up uh, like on the screen here. The stream elements background thing is fun. I had someone drop in on Monday. They're like, oh, hey, you want an overlay? I'm like, oh, sure. Come on, I'm supposed to get a bunch of them. You get a bunch? There they are. Now they're floating around. Okay. That's fine. Close projects. Close. Close. And close. All right. Here we had our get image here. All right, so instead of trying to return an entire page, what worked out easiest here is just saying, hey, I'm just going to send you just an image here. So it still does that same query. I select the data. I was getting the file name as well. I figured out how to get the file name to store, um, which is cool. We do that. That was in our upload, right? Yeah, this extract file name function that we stole from over here. Upload files to database. Oh, no, I, I, from here. Um, gets the name off of the header here. You can get the name out of it. And that way we can actually store the name because the, the regular get name part didn't work. But then we'll get the file and we'll save it into the database. And then we go to provide it to you. I actually think we use the image model then, do we? No. I don't use this anymore. I think we can get rid of this one. Let's try it. See if I can just delete. Refactor, safely delete. Okay. Yep, so we didn't end up using that one. So get image, then all the get image servlet is going to do is just return right to the response here that image data. So it gets the output stream, it writes the image bytes right to it, and it's good to go. And you do it with a header, and then it should be up and running. Let me uh, check out XAMP here. Get this fired up so we can get our images back out. We need the database and we need Tomcat up and running. Oh, actually, that's right. My Tomcat start doesn't work. I do it from here. All right. Let's give it a minute to spin up. thinking about it. So I don't think I haven't recently gotten a new phone, but it's my birthday today and I got a text from somebody who must know me and I have no idea who they are. <laughs> and I've responded a few times and I think it's too late now to say, I don't know who this is. Have you ever, you ever gotten into that situation? Let's see. I'm trying to get chat up here. So I've got showing you. Is anyone around? No, that's all right. We're almost near the end of the semester. Everyone's tired. I get connected to chat. All right, so we want here, and we wanted the uh, get image, and we wanted like ID is one. Here we go. We get the card back, and we do ID is two. We get nothing. Blob is null, so that's not a great um, handling there, but that's okay. Let's see if we can load up this here. Oh, I need a, a Apache running for that one. Maybe I can hit the database page. Uh, my PHP admin. Come on. Let's get this loaded up. Take a peek at it. All 
All right, here we go. Let's see what's in that database. I think I only ever uploaded the one. There's files. Oh no, I got four and five. Okay, they're all card back. Well, let's take a peek. Make sure that they all load up. So then four should work and five should work. Okay, five should work. Cool. So then what I did over in my JSP, a little view for it here. Um, what's it? This image view is we can stick that inside of an image and that is the source here then or this page could use that and generate this url and get it particularly from here so that's the image view so we, let me go grab image view use image view um, capitals are important here right image view capital v jsp and here we go. We pulled that image from the database. And again, it, it's grabbing the content of what it receives and just using that as the source here. And we can give it a particular white width and height that we wanted. Or we could just ignore that width and height and we'll see what we get here. We should get the original source, right? Hey, GZB. We're uh, taking a look at our final project here. We're uh, trying to build out a little uh, Twitter clone or parlor clone. Uh, as it were, uh, imagining we had to go, re you know, rewrite our app and get rehosted somewhere because we've done bad things. Um, so we're looking at a couple tools here. Uh, this is particularly dealing with images, um, storing them in a database, pulling them back out of the database. All right, cool. I think that fits. Oh, that's a long song, long song name. I wonder if I can make that like, nope. How do I make that? That's probably fine. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. So now we wanted to play with. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let, let's put a little uh, info box here. See if we can get this to work, loading a little bit asynchronously. Uh, we might be able to get something like that working. All right. So we need to go add a little input box here. Let's see. Maybe just go steal um, something from over here, little form. I don't want to have to rewrite the whole thing here. Now let's put it up here, maybe. And then we need a different action. We'll come back to that action in a minute here. We're going to post. So we want to have a, I don't know, image number. This is a little silly, but that's fine. This is ID. And we don't need a password box. And we'll say, I don't know, like fetch. Why not fetch? Fetch is probably fine. Okay. All right. Let me grab this one here. Oh, I'm going to pull this to the other page here. Sorry. Uh, uh, what was I looking for? Here we go. Another nice little example where it's going to follow through. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write a little bit of JavaScript. Now again, there's lots of different ways of doing this. Don't don't sweat it too much, uh, one way or the other. A supply chain attacks is being pushed to the PHP interpreter. I, I think I heard something about that. Those supply chain attacks are like actually pretty scary. Um, that that stuff has me worried um because that that stuff uh you know it's hard to to do much about unfortunately not not impossible but, but much harder to do things about so that's yeah that's that's definitely not uh not great <laughs> some of those things sorry i just remember my sugar is a little high at the moment take a shot real quick all right See what we got here. Okay. Kids maybe pancakes for breakfast. It was awesome. The only thing is pancakes are a big like carbohydrate bomb, so
Yeah, for sure, Yogi. Uh, what questions do you have about the final project? Be happy to chat more about it. That's kind of what we're doing today. This little bit of Ajax stuff and uh, talk about the final project. Yeah, Open SSL, didn't that have an issue a while ago, a couple years back? And that quickly got patched or something? But in the database? Sure. Yeah, so like if you wanted to store your tweets and setting it up, sure. Yeah, so let's all be in like PHP my admin. Um, hold that up here. So probably need a new database, right? I mean, at some point with this like user table, probably not too bad, uh, where we've got ID, name, and a password hash. So that sort of thing is probably fine, right? For logins, uh, depending on which uh, flavor you wanted to go with PHP or Java. I think most people are going PHP route, but I haven't actually heard from a lot of folks about it. Um, because we did more PHP to start, so I think that was more familiar for everybody. And we're just kind of tacking on, oh, this is how you do it in Java land. Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of ways to, to build databases. I, I would never write stuff by hand. I always use tools. Um, so, But you don't always have the PHP my admin, because sometimes this is, like, not a good idea to turn on. <laughs> in a production environment, but at that point you can just copy over from test and you just copy your commands over. Uh, all right, so we got a users table, right? And then what we probably want to do then, right, is have a way of saying, hey, this user follows another user, right? This idea of, is we want to be able to follow people or not? And what we get here, if we're thinking about how we would design databases, right? We got this like user table here, right? So user has its ID, has a name, as a password, right? Those are those are columns here, right? So, if a user needs to follow someone else, the ID that we have, right, our primary key is the ID here. So we probably have a table like follow, and follow then would have a um, a user ID, user ID, and a followed user ID. That's really all you need. So I could say, okay, so for user number one, give me everyone who they follow. And user one might have, okay, user one follows user two, user one follows user three, user one follows user five. Sure, why not? And then we might have more data in here, right? So maybe user two follows user one, maybe user five follows user two, and so on and so on and so on. But the idea here is that one user here relates to one user there, and one followed user relates to one user here. But I can have as many users here following as many other users as we want. We can make that as a little table. And if you want, just use a primary key. Great. Um, some people like composite keys where like this combination of your user and who you follow is the primary key. I'm not fond of composite keys, but that's just my preference. So I and I almost always just use the auto increment. So I would add a new table here right, in our test database, add a new table. And we might call this following. I'm glad you're here, Yogi. I was afraid no one was going to show up today, and I was just be talking to myself. All right, so we'll call this like following, I guess. And we'd have this is the user ID, and that's an int. Um, and we have a followed user ID, also an int. And then we need to go and add those references, right? Um, oh, and we need an ID here. That's right, I forgot. Right, we wanted to let me move these down here. Man, the, the Maybe using the wide tabs here is not great. I'm going to bump those down here. Here's my followed user ID. Sure. And this is just a regular ID. And this one now we will auto increment. So our regular ID can be our primary key. It can auto increment. And these other ones then will be foreign keys. Oops. Uh, yeah, primary key. That's fine. No, sorry. So we're... We, we want to auto-generate a primary key for this table. You don't have to, but then you have to have the user ID and the followed user ID be a composite key, and that's probably a little more complex than we care to care for right now. All right, so then these ones... No, uh, where do we set that? Why is it, it's been too long since I set these. I think we make them first, right? And then we go add those keys here, the foreign keys. We don't need any definitions. Index. No, not an index. 
Yeah, no, forget that. Not an index. Okay. So we'll set that up. And we'll save our table. And then we should be able to go and modify those here. All right, so we'll take a look at our following table. Here we go. We want to add our keys here. The relational view. Is that what we do? We can do a relational view. Here we go. So the user ID is going to reference the user's table ID column. Okay. And this is, I don't know, foreign key user ID. Sure. And we also want to add a foreign key followed user ID, which says that my followed user ID references the test database user table ID field. And these restricts are great. Restricts are the best option here. We'll go ahead and save that. Uh-oh. Error creating foreign key on user ID. Check my data types. Did I screw up those data types? Oh, they should just be ints, right? Int, int. Int? No? Alright, how did I screw that up then? User ID. Use a test. User ID. Foreign key. User ID. Why not? Try that again. Check my data types. What did I do wrong here? It may seem fine, but it's actually That's confusing. Skin cells Take a look at our table again here. Droppings. That's where Swiffer heavy duty dusters come in with thousands of specially coated fibers to yeah, They're all IDs. In one swipe. User ID. Can't hide on ceiling that one worked and looks the same here. What? When you're done, just remove the disposable cloth. What did we do wrong? Voila. That dust is gone for good. Int. Primary key ID, yeah. That's it's all good. Swiffer heavy duty dusters. That's weird. That is weird. Let's try it one more time, I guess. Foreign key user ID is the our user ID field. Their user ID field. Check data types. User ID. Test. I want to get the SQL out and view the SQL because that should work. Now I'm all confused. We can sum up McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich. References, user ID. Crispy, but also juicy. Oh, uh, foreign key. It's crispy, juicy user ID. Here again, preview my SQL. So we're going to alter the following table, add the constraint, foreign key on user ID, references user ID field. Check my data types. My data types match, friend. My database hates me. There are ints. What did we do wrong? It all is the same, isn't it? Check out this one here. Yeah, int length 11. They're all int 11s. Change it. Maybe we can add it here. Nope. Well, it should match. I don't... I don't why is it... Getting upset right now. That's weird. My user ID. Test user ID. That's it. Right? <laughs> okay. It worked. Maybe it just didn't like my key name here? Foreign key user ID. I just rename it. Oh, okay, so it doesn't like, it didn't like my ID there. That's crazy. That was it. It just doesn't like my name of it. That's what the data type. Why would that complain about a data type then? Sometimes databases are weird. All right, but anyway, we've got it now. We just, it's not, whatever. Sure. It's there. Okay. So that's how we reference who we're following. Okay, and then we want to maybe add like a tweets table. And this idea that you can have a bunch of tweets. So let's make, make a new table. Or what do we want to call them? They're not tweets. Uh, they're 
twits or <laughs> we gotta come up with a funny name for it. That's fine. This is our tweet table. Sure. Make a table. So we want an ID here, right? And it's fine to just let that auto increment. Again, that's nice and easy. Auto increment as our primary key. We like that. And then we need which user did it. So this is our user ID, right? Want to make sure that we've got that one. I thought you could add it here, but maybe not. I'm going crazy. The attributes? Have we added it? No. Nope. No. Okay, that's fine. And we probably need a time, right? This is a timestamp or something, whatever we want to call it. And this could be our. If that I can make that drop down load. Eight. Timestamp, there we go. Sure, a timestamp. And that could default then to current time, which is nice and easy. That way you don't have to tell the database what time it is. Just when you insert something, the database will say, here's the time it was entered. Works out real nice. Um, again, time is one of the hardest things you have to deal with with programming. So don't don't sweat it too much, um, especially when you deal with like multiple time zones and showing things and, and that sort of nonsense. Uh, my, my best advice I can give you is just do everything in UTC and store your offsets. Probably probably the easiest way to go about it there. Um, and there, there's some fun uh, ways of, of storing that, but beyond anything we need to tackle right now. All right, so we got the ID, we got the user ID, we got the timestamp. We need, well, what did they actually tweet here, right? This is like the, the, the text or something or the data or something. Sure. And we want to store that uh, probably just as a varchar max, right? Can we just do max, I think? Why is my dropdown not working here? That is weird. I think max is fine here. No default. Okay. Let's see if we can save that. Oh, available link. Max, all uppercase? What is it like for... Uh, I don't know. Uh, SQL varchar max. Let's look, Google it real quick. Where's max? Max size. 65535. Okay, 65535. 65535. That's probably sounds great. Try that. Okay, so now we've got a tweet table. But I still don't have an, a spot to store my images yet. So what I could do here then in my file collection. So I've got an ID for those. We got the data. We got a name for it. We need to link this with a tweet here. So we could add a field to files. Right, so let's go add a column here. Let's call this our tweet ID. Okay, so if you want to associate this file with a tweet, we'll go give it the tweet ID. And we can go add that foreign key here. So um, oh, we got to add a tweet real quick because it has to reference something. If we add a foreign key, it has to exist. So let's just go add a, a fun little tweet. Let's insert some data. So ID, we can leave it alone. User ID, we'll put it in as one. Timestamp is current timestamp. Um, manual tweet from database. We'll say go. And now we should have loaded all that data in. Let's go take a look. Okay, here we go. Current timestamp, ID, tweet ID. Great, Mandel view from database. So now in our files table, we can go link this up. I'm actually gonna go delete some of those because I don't want multiples. Um, I think one file per tweet is okay. Don't worry about having multiples because that's more complex than we need. So optionally one file image here. So let's go edit that and say that's tweet ID one here. And then what you can do when you go and query your database, so we'll go and hey, I wanna get the list of tweets when I find a tweet, I can then reference the image if I want. Right? Or we could just stick it right into the tweet. We could just, yeah, you know, we could we could just update tweet and have some blob data there if we wanted. That's probably easier than this route, because if we're just doing one to one, this is silly. But no, no, okay. So let's let's just go add tweet. Let's go add some blob data and an image name. That's probably easier. And then we could just associate it right there. Otherwise, we could link them up, right? You could have a files table that's associated with that if you want to do have many files associated with a single tweet. Um, but that's okay. And right now, we're not tracking replies either. Like, there's no reply to this tweet. Don't worry about that stuff. 
Um, but again, that's probably more complex we need to get at the moment. We're going to add two columns. We're going to add a, this is an image blob, right? And that is a blob type. Oh, now my dropdown's working. That's funny. And an image name. And that's just a, a varchar, I don't know, like 100 characters or less, probably. And these are okay to be null, right? These are okay to not have values, right? Because images are optional. The other ones have to have values. Okay, so now my tweet table here is pretty short and sweet. If you have some image data, you throw it in there. If you have an image name, you throw it in there. If you don't, you don't. So if they didn't upload a file to go along with the tweet, nothing shows up here. So when we go and we get the data out of the database, we can say, hey, if there's an image blob, let's go do something with it. If there's not, don't worry about it. Right, or maybe you like it as the separate call, and that's, we could do that too. Right, We could just call out and say, hey, go find me the file that's associated with that tweet. Either way is okay. So we can link a image table to the tweet ID, and we can go get something by tweet ID, or um, we've got a couple options there. Does that does that help at all, Yogi? And I think that's about all we need then for tables, right? Because then we're gonna, when we log in, we're going to show the user all the people that they follow and all of their tweets. So when someone logs in, then we want to, let's go add some follows here, right? How many users do we have? <clears throat> Excuse me, I think we got five users, one, two, and five. So we'll go add some following. Let's go and insert, I think so. Yeah, so let's do uh, user ID one, follows user ID two. Sure, and, oh, that's weird, I don't get the drop down here. What do I do on this one? Huh. User ID 1 follows user ID 5. Why not? Alright, so then what we could do is we could say we want to select star from following where user ID is equal to the currently logged in user. So if user ID user ID 1 is logged in, let's go get who they're following. Right? We could get a list this way if we wanted to. We'll see, okay, this is who they're following. Or we could go... Oh, I want to edit, sorry. If we want to get all the tweets then, right? So we want to select star from following. And then we want to join tweet on... So this is tweet.userID is equal to following dot followed user ID, where following dot user ID. So this is my user here, right? This is my user. And this is the tweeted user who I follow. So we're going to connect them. We're going to say, okay, give me who I follow. And then for the people that I follow, my followed IDs, give me all of their tweets. And then you could even order by, this is our timestamp, oh, what, a tweet dot timestamp descending here. Right, if we want a descending order, we get the newest at the top, which it should not be so hard to sort these things like that. I don't know why Facebook is so so bad at that. Uh oh. What did I do here? I broke it. Oh goodness, I lost it all. All right, hang on, let's try that again. So let me select star from following. Going tweet on tweet user IDs following. Following dot following user ID, where following dot user ID is us one. Can we just do that? Okay, cool. So we don't have any tweets by people we follow, because that tweet was us. Let's go add some more tweets then. All right, I'm happy to help with the SQL stuff. Again, the class was not a SQL class, so let's go insert some data. All right, well, let's pretend user two tweeted something here. And they tweeted more testing. And we don't need to do any files or anything like that. We're okay. We'll do that later. Okay, and let's go add one more here by user five, maybe. So let's say user five tweeted by user five. Then when we're done, we're going to sell this as a non-fungible token and profit because everyone wants to buy NFTs lately because people are dumb. 
I don't understand it. I mean, I, I barely understand crypto as it is and like why people want this thing, uh, but that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna go back and try and rewrite that sequel. I should have saved it. It's all right. Let's write some more sequel. So we want to select star from following. Join tweet on tweet dot user ID is my following dot followed user ID where following dot user ID is me equals one. I should get the two tweets, right? Here we go. The more testing in the high user five. But if I want the most recent first, let's see if we can edit this here. I want to be a by tweet dot timestamp descending. There we go. Now we get them in descending order. All right, now it works. Maybe it just because it was empty before it didn't work out. I don't know. Right, we can get all that information. Who was it? What they tweeted? Right, and if there was an image or not. Right, or we could do some other options there for getting images. Or once we got this, we could go take all those tweet IDs and try and find images. Um, right, not too big of a deal. And save save the image thing for last. Get the regular stuff working first, and then we can figure out how to add the images after. Yeah, I think those three tables should do it. Right, you've got your users, you got your tweets, and you got your following. So if you wanted to, if, if the other route, you could have tweet, then have an optional file ID or image ID that we could go get out of the images table. And that might be a fun way to do it, because then you could say, like, in your controller, hey, if there is something, let's go and make a call to, say, like, get image. And you could load that up in the JSP, right? Hey, if there was, if there is an image ID, go and load that, right? We could do a little check for if there's an ID here, we could go load it. That sort of thing, or, or you know, get it out of the bean. Um, we got options here. Okay. How are you feeling so far, Yogi? Create accounts and log in. You do. Do we need to do encoding or in an output screen? So, like, create an account. Uh, would just be so. Make a new one. We need a form for. Hey, what's your what's your username? What's your password? Let's make a new account, and we'll just insert that into the user table. Yep, and then the login is just like we did before, where we, we just try and log you in and check your password hash. So for all your tough kitchen and bathroom messes, try Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. I'm running out of coffee here. I'm gonna have to take a break in a minute. At Kroger, everything we sell all right, cool. Oh, you know, I forgot to tell you the the that's right. I was waiting for more people to come by. My proposal here for this um, next week, I have scheduled a final exam. And my thought is we've got enough nonsense going on with this final project that we could just skip the final exam. And we'll just count that percentage score towards the final project. So make your final project worth 40% of your score instead of 25. And then you just don't have to take a final exam next week. That way you can focus on this final project. That, that's my proposal. Because I, I think that's a, a better measure of whether or not you've learned anything anyway, if we can get this final project done. I think so. I, I, I think at this point I'd like to just skip the final exam and say, well, let's take that part of your score and lump it into the final project. And we'll call the final project essentially the exam as well. Because you don't need to be studying for a final exam on top of trying to finish this project. I mean, they would probably would go hand in hand, like working on the project would help you with some of these techniques and things, but um, I think we're fine. You folks agree? You okay with that? And then next week, um, just last minute wrap up. We can spend the whole time if you have any last minute questions and we'll get that project in by, I think it was 11.59 p.m., right? Excuse me. Yeah, the so 29th, 11.59 p.m. I like that. Okay. Cool. Um, if, if you folks agree with that, we'll go and change that then. So let me, let me go grab this real quick. Back to this. I'll go update it to version four of the syllabus now, right? Let's see. Yeah. 
Go CC. 2454. Nope. This one here, yeah, version 3. Now you're going to become our version 4. Nope, nope. 4. Open that one up. Yeah, let's 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 get rid of that exam. Ooh. We don't need that stress. Okay? It's not worth it. Whoa. Ow. There we go. There we go. Here we go. So, this will be then 40%. And we'll just take this row out. Delete row. Okay. Save. We concur. So I'll go add that here as version 4. Alright, awesome. Yeah, I think, you know, if this might have been an in-person class in ground, um, it's could have worked out to have a final exam, but, um, nah, let's, let's skip it. I mean, usually they, they want to see that we're doing some kind of exam. That's fine. Uh, but I think this is okay. Did it even load? Preparing the preview? Maybe I screwed up the upload. I like that cat, the glitch cat. <laughs> Come on, let's see if it loads here. Maybe. I might have broke it. I just want to make sure it's there. We all agree. Ah, there we go. All right. So make sure that is the updated version. Yep, cool. Final project, projects, quizzes. Awesome. And, uh, and again, I'm so sorry. I don't have these things graded yet. I've been working through it. Um, yeah, so I'll take your final project score and replace your lowest individual project with that score as well. Um, so that, that's that's what we can do there. Um, I mean, the, the goal is everyone gets this final project done and you'll do great. Um, that's, I mean, because if you could do the final project, it I don't care all that much if you weren't able to do the individual ones quite as well. Not too big of a deal, okay? Um, you know, this is like the, the capstone project. We're trying to put together all the tools and things we've, we've worked on, so I think we should be fine there. Okay? All right, cool. And I, I'm working on getting the, all this stuff graded. I'm so sorry for the delay. Um, it's, it's a bigger backlog than I had expected. So I'm working my way through it. Um, but I, 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 I don't know, I can tell you, if you're worried about it, why is there an extra line there? Um, you, you're not going to do worse than you do on your final project. Okay? So if, if you ace the final project, you'll be perfectly fine. If that's not going well, I haven't heard from anybody saying it's not going well yet, and it's due in a week, I'd be really concerned. But hopefully you have been working on it all month here to kind of get this thing going little by little by little, and we're in better shape. So... Um, that's sort of the plan, okay? Oh, for sure. Yeah, anytime, Yogi. You don't even have to wait till office hours. Just ping me, uh, find me on Discord, text me, call me, email me. I'm happy to write, help you with any of that SQL stuff. I mean, the course isn't a SQL course, um, and it, weirdly, it's not a prereq. So that's all. I'm happy to help with stuff like that. Yeah, of course. All right, this extra line there is bothering me. Um, give me just a second. I'm sorry. I, I want to fix that because it shouldn't have an extra line hanging out there. <laughs> it's the little things that, that bother me sometimes. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. So this one. There. I probably hit enter in the wrong spot at some point. I'm going to replace that one more time with V4. It's the same thing. That, that's a formatting change. I'm not going to call it version 5. So I appreciate your flexibility, folks, on this. Um, it's been quite the semester. I know this is not um, the ideal college experience. Oh, was it in the table too? You're right, you're right. Uh, I'll take that out. Uh, so, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're doing our best in this pandemic learning. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully you folks will be around. I don't know if you're going to be done or not after this final project work time. 
I mean, don't save it till the 29th, obviously, because uh, that's 40% of your grade there for the one thing. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll put that in as the schedule. One more time here. Replace. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Yogi. Um, so I appreciate you bearing with us and being flexible. If I think the fall semester, we're looking to be mostly normal-ish depending on how things go over the summer, I guess. I don't know when they're going to make that call. The summer semester, they already said, is going to be mostly remote again. We're going to do the same sort of thing remotely. Um, and you, you're welcome to come hang out on Twitch and pester the, the next class or any of the other classes if you're so bored. Um, and hang out in the Discord and then chat with people is always fine. I added a new like career tips or something channel there. Um, someone, a, a former student, said the United Wholesale Mortgage Company they're like the big company growing in Ann Arbor, or no, uh, Pontiac now, um, is trying to scale out their tech team. Um, and he works there and, and said it's, it's, it seems to be a decent place. So if you have any tips like that when you move on, um, that's great. Share them with the, your fellow classmates and alumni and whoever else wants to hang out and keep in touch. All right, I gotta go grab some more coffee. Why don't we take a couple minute break and then we'll come back and we'll finish up the Ajax stuff and see if we can take a look at that, okay? All right, awesome. You like the recording of classes, but still like actual class. Yeah, I'm hoping um, in, in the future I'll still try and record classes. Um, I, I'm going to keep trying to live stream them just for fun, but we'll be in person, you know, come fall, hopefully. So I'll just be doing it from the classroom instead of from my home office here. Um, but I like this live stream option for anyone who can't make it in person. Um, and that is... Actually, a model that they call high flex learning, which has um, you can be in person, you can be in person synchronously or remotely synchronous. Um, so, like what we're doing here, where if you want to show up and join chat, you can show up and join chat. And then asynchronous optional. So, if you can't make it in person, you can't make it remotely at that time. We've got the recordings available and other other options there. So, uh, I like that sort of learning model. I think. Um, a, you know, maximum flexibility is ideal, I think, because life happens and, and things are hard for people. So uh, that, that's going to be my goal moving forward to see if I can keep that model and, and adopt that. But, um, you know, there, there might be some restrictions around like, hey, if you're if you're not doing well and you're failing the projects, you, you should probably come in person because obviously this is not working well. So but, you know, that's all also some implementation pieces we can we can work out later. So I right, want well, to take a quick break. We'll come back in a little bit here, and we'll pick it up with our Ajax stuff. Put the break time on here. I don't need that one anymore. Delete that one. Move. There we go. Oh, not 709. Sorry. There's a. Let's aim for say uh, 207. About 10 minutes or so. A little break, and we'll go from there. All right. Oh, well, let's watch we get a bunch of Spotify ads now, too, right? <laughs> Alright, we'll be back in a little bit.
As a Blue Cross Medicare member, you can expect access to care as soon as you need it. Just call our customer service team for the help and information you need. You can also schedule appointments for checkups or routine care at a time that's convenient for you. With Blue Cross, it's easy to get the care, tests, or treatment you need whenever you need them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Confidence comes with every card. To learn more, visit bcbsm.com slash senior care. I absolutely love my dog, but the constant shedding, not so much. But then I got a Swiffer Sweeper pet kit and it is amazing. These super thick cloths pick up a crazy amount of hair. Just look at all that. And that was just from one swipe. And the best part, Sweeper's so much easier to maneuver than a broom or a vacuum. Easily getting around chairs and under the couch. You're right. Now I can focus on you, not your shedding. Swiffer Sweeper Pet Kit. Because shut up. We can sum up McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. Crispy, but also juicy and tender. Okay, it's crispy, juicy, tender. All one word, but then also pickle. Oh, and potato bun, which is two words. Okay, we can't sum up our new crispy chicken sandwich in one word, so you'll just have to try it to understand it. Order ahead on the McDonald's app at participating McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.
Hey folks, welcome on back. How's everybody doing? Alrighty, I think that's working out okay. Alright, awesome, 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 awesome. So, a couple last things here then. Uh, we're going to work on that loading here, right? So we had a little form showing up. And what we want to do on action is we want to call some JavaScript. And we haven't done JavaScript before, and that's okay. Uh, don't worry too much about it here. It's okay. Um, so we're just going to essentially steal some JavaScript here from this little example website. Sure, why not? So let's put in a little comment. Uh, Uh, percent, right? There. Okay, so we're going to just take everything from here, essentially. A little JSP example, and we're going to steal this JavaScript code. So we're going to take this whole little script block, and we're going to throw this in here. So actually, uh, we want to do that before the body. Maybe I should have put that reference up a little higher there, then. Um, uh, I didn't paste in super well, did it? There. Okay, and give that a little format. Okay, so, we don't need username, email, telephone, division. We don't need any of those, okay? What we do need, though, is we need the ID. So this document is us, right? This is our, our document. This is the HTML page. So get element by ID will give us a, a particular value by based on the ID field so our ID down here oh we didn't uh, we didn't give it one so ID we need a name here we'll call this ID equals the uh, what do we want to call this one this is our image number how about image number there so the ID here is called image number this is the identifier for this field we're gonna go drop this up here and this will get the value out of it here so this is our image ID Image ID. Okay? We don't need the other ones. And then what is the URL? Where do we want to send this request? Right? Well, we want to send it to the um, slash hello world slash uh, get image. And we want ID equals. And we'll throw in the image ID. Image ID. Okay, that's going to be the request we're going to send to our page right, to get an image out. And then we can alert. Uh, this is just kind of like debugging. Are we going to see what is that URL we can see here? The the console write is probably better here. I like console log. Probably better than that. So we'll console log the URL. And we don't, I don't think we need any of this ActiveX stuff here. That should be fine. So we'll create a new request. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, on the ready state change, we're going to use the send info option. We're going to post the data, and we're going to send it out. And we'll just uh, we'll probably log that one too. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so then send info says, okay, well, where are we going to put this information? Well, now for us, we're going to put it in, let's see. So instead of our image source there... Uh, maybe we can just put it in our, our paragraph here. So sure, we'll make a little p. And we'll, ID is our result here. Okay. And I'm gonna take this image out. Okay. So we're gonna get the ID of this is the result here, right? Our result that becomes the place we're going to add something to and we can change the inner html we're going to modify the dom here to be a particular result okay so when we get particular results on the ready state we're going to check and see what our results are so when we get back ready state four we should be able to take the response here and throw it in let's see what we get Let's give that a shot. So we're going to load that all up. So then our action here on the form needs to be calling this JavaScript function. 
So the action on the form is to call some JavaScript. So we're not sending it to an HTML location, we're just calling some JavaScript. Okay, oh, and actually, no, I'm sorry, we, uh, we don't, that's not an action here. Uh, we don't need that. My mistake, sorry, this is the button result here. So the type here is not a submit. Type is just a button, and then we want an on click. There we go. Okay, so we don't actually need that all in a form, do we? Yeah, we can forget the form. Because there's no actual HTML submission going on here. We're just getting the field out of there. And we're going to try and, and load this up, see what we get here. Alright, so let's see what we get. So we're going to refresh our page. We should get an image number. We're going to try one and see if we can fetch. Oh, look at that! That's close. And uh, now that's the binary data, right? So we're close, we processed it, but we, we don't want to display it as text. Sorry, image view, let's reload that. Okay, so we're close. We need to wrap all that then in our image, right? We can put that in our image source. But we don't want that as a paragraph here, though. we want that as an image. Image ID equals image. See if we can do that. Mm. I don't know if I can actually set the inner HTML like that. Let's try it. No, let's not do what we want. Because we're not yeah, we're setting up there. Shoot. Let's see. Oh, we got a response, but yeah, that didn't do what we wanted. Let's, go, let's undo this a little bit. Put it back to our paragraph. Alt. Ah, let's just go Google real quick. Um, let's alt from Ajax response. Hmm, let's see. Let's take a look at this one. This might work. Get the image data set into the image source. Post response. Unload. Find out the answers on the Every Little Thing podcast playlist. Tap now to listen on Spotify. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Let's be real. Let's see. You have to fill the bucket. Pushing a wet. Heavy that might work. A response. Done, so ah, can we change our response really type? A hassle on top of a hassle. Try Swiffer Wet Jet. With Swiffer Wet Jet, you start with a fresh pad and cleaning solution every time. And when you're done, you just toss response the pad. Type, blob. Swiffer can we do that? Jet. Image. The faster, easier, cleaner way to clean your floors. Jay Farner here, CEO of Rocket Get the Morgan source. And Rocket Companies. Last year we saw historically low mortgage interest rates. But you mm. may not know not sure that one's gonna work for us. And it's likely that trend is only going to continue. Our team of experts is standing by to help you save before rates go up. Don't look back and wish that you would take an action. Call eight three three eight. That's all with the jQuery. I was hoping to do this without the jQuery library. Call for cost information and conditions equal housing lender license in all fifty states and MLS consumer access.org number thirty three. No, that's not what we want. This is the one we were working through, right? Yeah, this, this example. That just doesn't load what we want. So we want that uh, inner HTML. Bitch. Ah, here we go. We do that. It goes an image source. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Alright. Mm. 
image source. Okay, so we'll just set it as an image source here. We need the response effects? Maybe, let's try that. Let's image source. Plus text, maybe? Maybe that'll work. Let's give that a shot. So let's see if we can view our page source while we're doing this too. See if we can see if anything changes. Oh! It's close. I'll refresh. I didn't change it. Result? View page source. Oh, it's not even show me there. That's alright. I got the image tag, but it didn't actually show the right image there. Let's see. Can we throw that in? Double quotes for the image attribute. Backslashes. Source. Not quite. We're close. We're close. We do it as base 64? I wonder if that'll work. Nope, still nothing. Vault. Let's see if we can inspect that element. Yeah, that's not what we want. Oh, this one. In this view. We can make it be the request. Ah, uh, what do we get from our... We can get it out of here. Uh, as a JPEG, maybe? Uh, text? Let's see. Almost what we had here, right? So you're saying if we add the... Is this not a PNG? As a JPEG? Yeah, let's try that. It has image, JPEG, A64. Text. No, because it's not. It's not loading it right as the data there. It's not because it's not base 64. It's just the image itself. You need to embed that better, I think. Can't just put it as I can't just do just the text either, can we? I think we tried that and that didn't work. Nope. It adds the image tag, but it's not the right source. Maybe it's not response text. That's what I was looking for. We get a different Yeah, 
he wants. Is that a stick? No. Oh, getting the actual image data. Response type blob. Chrome doesn't support it, of course. Image, image source. Ooh, can we just do result? There. Request response. Next up, response. So we can do the whole response. Nope. Same thing. What do we do wrong? Where do we need? Response. Blob builder. File reader. Doesn't support response type. Oh, we're getting so close. We're getting close. That looks way too complex. Why do have the blob object? Oh, here we go. We just do it as a blob. So response type is blob. So then request... Where do we set that? We're getting close, folks. Get URL response. I URL. That looks fun. We need to tell it it's a response type blob. Response type, there we go. Response type equals blob. Can we do that? And what were we doing here? You don't need the text there. Okay, can we do it this way? Give that one a shot. That looks fun. Oh, did it do anything? I don't think it did anything. Oh, we never used Resolve, right? Alright, that one was looking promising. Oh, oh, yeah, I shouldn't set it. That's what we don't want to set it there. We want to set... Um, set it to this. This image. We just set it to image, maybe? Don't do that, then. Oh, it's not res response, response? No, it's request, not response. Maybe that's what it was. Oh, it did something. Uh, okay. No, we'll leave that back there, but this is the request there, then. Response, can we just append it to the body? Hey, look at that! Okay, so, that append is working, that's a good sign. So we get the image tag, but we're not setting it... Then how do we go add that? Image... Uh, let's see, can we do image? That was our tag there, right? Oh, the image. Oh, we want a result. Can you hear the sound? Our result is document. Get element by ID, right? Result. We do result. Not a pen child. By that. Hey, 
Hey, now it's put in there. Look at that. We did it. We blobbed it out. Awesome. And all with an Ajax request. How fancy is that? All right. So we take a look at the network requests here, right? We're going to see as we fetch, we get a new request out here to get image, right? And the response it gives us is the image. How cool is that? It's kind of fancy, right? So we could throw that in there and we'll just update the DOM as we go. So we're adding that child image. Here, I like this adding a child image. That's pretty cool. Easier than setting that other thing. We just need to do it as a blob type, it looks like. Fonts type. I like that. And these don't need to be posts. I think they could be a get as well. I think we can get the data there. And, and probably get makes more sense because we're not... Um, yeah, I think a get more, more correct because we're not changing any data. Yes, yeah, so you could use Ajax to like the tweet, for sure. So you could send that out to um, add a like. Oh, that's right. We, we, we need to like tweets. Is that, is that a <laughs> is that a thing I asked you to do? Fine, let's take a peek. I think I said you're supposed to get a like tweets, didn't I? Assignments. Okay, so if we need to like tweets, we need to add a place where we can like them in the database. So let's edit this. Including the virus that causes COVID-19. Once dry, microband 24 sanitizing spray is effective for 25 hours right. on bacteria when used as directed. What do we have to do? User, creation, login, change password. The homepage lists all the tweets when they follow. Or tweets if they aren't logged in. Um, username lists the tweets for a specific user, including number of likes. So the tweet should have likes there. So we should be able to like tweet. Okay, yeah, include an option to like and unlike. So we should have... Okay, we can sum up our new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. So, you know, it's probably easiest to just say, let's not, um, to, to let the user like a tweet more than once, I think is probably easiest. So we just have like a like count and every time you click the like button, it'll increase. So if you want to like the exact same tweet a hundred times, let's just, let's just not care. No, I think, uh, let, let's just go the cheesy route here. And we'll just say, hey, on our tweets, then here, we'll just have a like count. We can have a... Add another column here. To add a column because we could have a table where, like, where the user likes this tweet. You could you could do that. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, but it's probably easiest to just we'll just add a column for um, this is likes. And that's just an integer value, and it's going to default to default to default to zero. Zero. So that way, every time a tweet, you create a new one, it has zero likes, and when you click the like button, we'll just add a like to it. So you could add a little, um, here, just send a get, or send a post. Um, probably a post at that point, right? If we're changing data, it should be a post, though you don't repeat it here. But click a like button, it'll increase the like count. Okay? Yeah, we can do that. Awesome. Oh, and we should see what was logging here. Did we get anything in the logger? Uh-oh. Response text is only available if response type is... Did I change that? Image view 54? 54. Oh, yeah, we don't want this response text. Uh, I want like individual card. No. Oh. Playing card? Poker card? I want like one at a time. <laughs> Alright, here. Here's the King of Clubs. Ooh, that's from iStock. Oops. If I find one that's not from iStock. 
we have let's do the filter on free free to modify chair and commercial of course now they don't have a go there's one oh it came from wikipedia nice okay so we'll save that one two spades okay let's see if we can upload that one Fades, upload. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably fine. Let's take a look at the table. I don't think we ever finished out that uh, design, did we? Let's see if we get another image. Oh, no, it failed. Something failed. Is that too big? I know we, we can only have images that were so large. No, that should be fine. What happened? Sound. Two spades. What? How'd we break it? Is it not loading? It's not loading. Oh, tweet ID doesn't have a default value. Shoot. Okay, so we broke it with SQL here. Oops. Uh, that's what happened. So my files table here, the tweet ID, you need to go edit that. Because that should be... Right, you know what, I'm just going to delete that. Let's just delete. Drop. Drop tweet ID. Okay, there. Now we don't have a required tweet ID. We should be able to upload. There we go. So now we should be able to get those back out here. See if we can go to the host, hello world, yeah, get, uh, we wanted the image view, right? Use image view. So it should be, what do you think, number six, maybe? Browse, yeah, okay, image six, we should be able to get back out then, right? We do image one, we fetch it, we get image six and we fetch it. Woo, that one's big! Cool. One, six. Now you can fetch them all. You probably want to resize that a little bit there then, but again, it's not, not too big of a deal right now. Okay. You can do like image dot, what's, uh, length. I don't know, 200. Image dot width. 100. Let me fetch out six. There we go. A little smaller. Oh, we still have the please wait, though. We want to get rid of the please wait, don't we? You know what? Let's just not even bother with any of that nonsense. Yeah, we don't even need that back there, then. Uh, there. Okay, image one. Image six. Six, 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 one. Look at that. We just keep adding them now. Because we're a pending child here. We just keep adding new images. Versus overwriting each time. So if we wanted to, we could like clear out the existing children. Or we could just keep on appending. Either way is okay. Alright. How are you folks feeling? We doing okay? Oh, and then the Spring Framework. That's right, I wanted to show you the Spring Framework. Spring Framework. So, Spring Framework is fantastic here. It's got this whole set of guides for getting started with the Spring Framework, building all sorts of cool things. Um, RESTful web services would be fantastic if we could build them. Um, we just don't really... Or, like, uploading files would be really cool. Lots of great examples here. Validating the input. Um... Of course, we don't have time to build out using the server. We kind of did it all by hand so you understand the components rather than here's one particular framework and you're only going to know how that framework works. The idea is if we go through some of the basics with the language, um, you can learn any framework that you need. That's why we don't typically use one individual framework. And these are all pretty quick. Um, little hello world example here to get you set up. Uh, we do have a web services class, which is really cool. That's all about building and playing with web services, specifically, not just... Um, JSP, PHP stuff. 
so you can get out some results here and you can send requests and it's really fun. So if you're using IntelliJ, you can just import right into there. Um, it should work with our NetBeans. You just have to go through and you're either gonna set up the Maven build section or the Gradle build section. Uh, you know, it. I don't know if I have a preference as to which one. Like, oh, uh, .NET, is that what the other option there? ASP.NET? You know, I'm a big Microsoft fanboy, so I, I'm a big fan of that. And we, we teach a C-sharp web service class, or we, we teach a C-sharp class and a C-sharp web services class, which is really cool. Um, and I, I like the ecosystem. I like Visual Studio. I think it's a great tool. Um, but these other ones are great too. Uh, and you can do a lot of things with them, which is pretty fun. That dark mode. Woo, bright dark. That's so fun. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it just depends on what other tools people have been using. Because when you go to an organization, you're probably going to build off of their existing tool set. Um, I don't think it's Blazor. Let me see. CIS. Here. That's uh, 2555, I want to say. Yeah, web systems development. Uh, so it's more just basic. Um, so it's similar to this class, but it's taught in ASP.NET with C Sharp. So server side software, um, web application architecture, the ASP, asynchronous JavaScript, whatever, all these sort of things here. A little bit secure. So similar to what we've done here, but it's done using C Sharp. All right, similar to our class. Um, so moving forward, not yet, um, and actually not even next year. Oh man, we're talking about the year after. Um, the a goal of mine, yeah, I like C Sharp better too. <laughs> uh, that's just me. Um, is to make this be an optional class. So like right now our program or uh, this one, right? This page. So right now the software engineering track, you have to take the web systems development course and you take C++ and those aren't really optional and you take Android. I think moving forward as a as a CIS discipline, we're looking at trying to make more choices here. So it's not just C++ as a language. You could take any of our language electives. Uh, for the web systems development, you could take this one or the C-sharp version. Uh, if you've taken the C-sharp language elective and then for mobile development, it should be Android or iOS. But the problem is this apparently takes a really, really long time to change degree programs because it has to go through a certification process and the higher learning commission that accredits us and, and all this nonsense. So it's not going to be for quite a while. Um, so like not even next catalog year, but the year after is the one we're working at now, which blows my mind that you have to be that far ahead because this process is so slow. Um, the other option you have is if that's something you really wanted to do, you can talk to your department chair. So if your home campus is Auburn Hills, you talk to the CIS department chair there. Or if your home campus is Orchard Ridge, you talk to our department chair here, Dr. Baugh, and see about getting a uh, substitute override something. There's like some form you can fill out to take the class instead of another class. Um, so that that's, might be an option if you want to pester Dr. Ball about that to say, hey, I'd rather take this one than this one. Would you be okay with that? Uh, they don't like to do those a lot because the paperwork is a little funny. But uh, so down the road, um, hopefully that'll be more elective style. So like take any language elective. I mean, C++ is good. It's good to know. It's very popular still. But maybe if you wanted to take a C Sharp or a, a Python class or even Visual Basic, I guess, um, it might be nice to have that as an option there instead. So that way you're still doing more than one, more than just Java, but you know, whichever language you want. And then web system development, either the Java version, PHP version, or the C Sharp version, and then Android or iOS for some mobile. That way we're still giving you a nice broad base, but you've got a couple options, hopefully. So that's all in the works. All right, and then uh, don't forget to tell me what you're looking for in a classroom. Uh, my big idea is that because a lot of you fine folks have devices already, instead of it being a desktop lab environment, we would have um, a little more of a flexible classroom with tables and things. We could slide them into groups and do a little more group work easier than the rows that we used to have and have laptops that can be checked out for class. Uh, that's that's my pie in the sky dream that I still have to talk Bean into. Uh, but that, that was my ask as we design a new building is that we don't set them all up with desktops. We I have just a bank of laptops we could loan out for class. 
because um, I don't know if they're going to keep the OCC Cares laptop program going or not, where we're going to give people laptops. But even then, those aren't great high-powered machines either. Um, but I don't know. I, I think having, you know, if half of you folks bring your, your own laptop to class, then, you know, you don't need the desktop in front of you anyway. So that's just a thought of mine. I think that sort of thing might work. So, yeah, just some thoughts. Alright, any other thoughts, questions, concerns? You know, we uh, got this final project to work on. Again, if you're stuck on anything, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to hop on a screen sharing call and get things working with you. I, I want this to be something you're, you're kind of proud of by the time it's done. Right? Like, hey, look at this cool thing I built. Um, so just, you know, that, that, that's the goal here. I, I'm not going to ignore you and say, no, go figure it out yourself. That's definitely not the ideal here, right? The, the goal of this is that we're putting together all the things we've learned and we've got a fun little project at the end. Um, that it's interesting. I don't know if interesting is the right word, but you know, like to see what does it take to write your own Twitter? And obviously there's more features and all sorts of other cool things Twitter really does, but you know, can we get some bare bones here if we wanted to? Okay. All right, and oh, just another thing. Uh, by the way, this is a really bad. I should I should mention this Git image just being open to anybody here, and like anybody who wants goes and gets an image off the database. This is bad, right? You shouldn't. You can't just go to Twitter and say, "Oh, here I want image number one, image number two, image number three, right? Uh, so please please don't take this as good practice. Um, we're just this is the easy implementation for us. Um, it's not secure, and this is what actually happened to Parler, and why because they're stupid, um, they launched an application like this. And, and one of the things that they let their users do is provide an image of their driver's license to mark them as a verified US citizen in the application, because obviously that's such a cool feature. You wanna know who the verified citizens are. Uh, the problem was they just stored them in their database sequentially. And when you wanna go find an image, you just put it in a number there and it gave you the image, regardless of to whether or not you should be able to see that image. I mean all the tweets are public so like tweet related images should be public but you know things like verifying your identity with your government issued id probably shouldn't be publicly accessible uh, but it was because they're stupid um, and you know that's it, it yeah so people lost a lot of personal information there uh when someone downloaded all of it they're like oh hey i can get all your images out of the database i'm gonna go download them here for fun uh so yeah th this open thing here should only be for public images that anybody can see and again that was the idea with twitter being public but like generally this is a little awkward to just say hey grab any image you want off of my database you know if everything's designed to be, designed to be public fine but don't put don't commingle your private images with your public images there like they did because that was just terrible okay all right um so no final exam next week um i don't have any lecture planned for next week so Ideally, you're done with the project before next Thursday at 1 p.m. Okay, if you're not, hopefully it's like the last little, okay, this one little thing doesn't work here. Um, we, we've got some time then, we can hop on a screen sharing call um, and, and see what's going on there. But, you know, ideally we're getting it done throughout the weekend and next week, and, and hopefully it's mostly done already because we've had four weeks to work, or three weeks to work on it, but I know that's not always the case. Uh, sorry, I'm looking up on my second monitor. The, the webcam is right over here. And my other monitor's up over here. So I'm trying to follow chat and see how it's going over there. Um, yeah, so it's been a lot of fun. Ooh, I do have for you, folks. That's right, before I forget, don't let me forget here. I need to go and add the end of semester survey for you to please fill out and take. This is the anonymous course evaluation here. Give me just a second to load this up. Gotta go import it here. Import. And let me grab my D2L package here. There we go. Let's import that. So this is um, what you might have done in paper previously, but this is our a rate from a scale from one to five, your class, other things, all, and then with some uh, optional dates here. The answer give me a second. Let me go find it, and I'll show you what it looks like. And then please, please do take this because it is part of my 
evaluation process. As a new faculty member, I get evaluated every semester by the dean and my department. Um, and after three years, they decide whether or not they want to keep me. So um, it is anonymous, but I do want to change this restriction here. You get one response that you can edit. And then our dates here. So this should be today at 1 p.m. And it's due by um, next week. 11.59 p.m. So before the end of the semester, please take a minute to fill this one out here, this end of semester survey. And let me show it to you real quick. Preview. All right, just some simple questions. It should take you five minutes or less. But please do it for me. Uh, it goes into my review package. Right, Whether or not I communicate clearly and effectively, if I am help, helpful and encouraging, if I'm prepared for each class, if I use our time effectively, if we meet class obligations in a timely manner. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, encourages questions and comments, it's a positive attitude, objectives and requirements are clearly defined, handouts, visuals, instruction materials will help. You guys can read, I'm sorry. Um, but then you get three free text boxes, comments about me, anything you want here, please just be honest, right? I do read these and I take them seriously and I try and improve if you, you point out things that didn't go so well. And if you just want to complain about me, that's great. The dean will read it um, and that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I've got a relatively thick skin by now. I've been teaching for... This is my ninth year teaching. Wow. Uh, so you build up a pretty thick skin. Um, you know, and, and honestly, if, if something was terrible, please tell me. If you don't tell me that something was terrible, it's hard for me to know. Okay? Um, Course-specific comments. So this is about the course itself, the content of the course, the books that we use, that sort of thing. Um, and then it's anything else you want to say. Um, happy to see all of it. So my one, one note here is that if you put something in here that is very particular to you and your circumstances. I had one time someone was like, oh, I had this issue come up and I had to be out for two weeks and because of this, whatever. And like, they had told me about this and said, hey, I need to be out for two weeks because of X, Y, and Z. When they filled out those comments and they mentioned that, obviously I knew who it was. So like, don't put identifying situations in here either. Um, if, if you want to remain anonymous, okay? Um, I couldn't, I, maybe I can because if there's only one result, I can see it, but like, if there's 10 people, I can't link up your answer here to the other ones. Um, so just don't put your name in there or identifying information and you'll be anonymous, okay? And then they are, I uh, will show you if you're so curious here. Give me a second. You're going to go grab uh, last semesters here. I'll show you what these look like here. So like here's the C++ results. So I just get this sort of uh, result view of this is how many people said what or not. I only had five people fill it out for the C++ class. That was really sad, uh, but that's okay. And then those free text fields, right? Like here, sure. Okay. So please take a few minutes, fill it out. I'm going to add that. Um, I'll just add an announcement for it, I guess. That's probably easiest. So please do that before the semester's over because uh, D2L will lock you out shortly. And I'll be working on getting all the grades in as fast as I can here. Uh, so sorry for that delay. Uh, but um, uh, my goal is that this final project goes well for you and you will not do worse than your final project score. Okay? Is I'll use that to replace your worst individual assignment uh, and you, you shouldn't be able to do any worse than your final project score. And hopefully you'll get 100% on it. That's that's the goal. If you're not getting 100%, reach out and let me know. Right? I, I will be happy to meet with you and see what we can do to finish all of those individual objectives. Give these a stop here. Okay? So let me add an announcement. There. Um, and I think do we still have another day or two, the Summer Momentum Scholarship. Don't forget, if you are going to take a summer class, um, I think there's still time. Yep, due date uh, deadline is tomorrow here. So if you're going to take a summer class and you are a, a student in the fall and winter this year, or last fall and this semester, which you're a student this semester, if you had at least 18 credits, they'll pay for three to six, depending on if you're 24 or more credits. So you can apply for that, which is fantastic. Uh, you still have up till tomorrow to do that. Um, so go for it, right? Um, get those classes. This is our end of semester survey. End of semester survey. Oh, here, I'll just, we'll, we'll recap the notes here. Let me just take a minute. Fill out the end of semester survey. is surveys Why is it semester survey um nope. syllabus needed to remove the final exam and final 
object is worth 40%, it's dead. Percent of your score. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Eric. Alright. So I think that's all we've got then. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great semester. I appreciate you folks bearing with me. Uh, this was my first time teaching this course, and apparently now it is my baby. I'll be teaching this course um, in the future when we did our annual schedule planning. Um, no one else wanted it, or whatever the deal is. Um, so uh, it was really Dr. Ball and I are the main folks teaching the software engineering program. Uh, Ken Sigler over at Auburn Hills teaches occasionally some of the courses, um, but mainly it's just Dr. Ball and I. And actually tomorrow, I'm super excited, we're going to be interviewing candidates for a third full-time position in the software engineering program. So we'll hire uh, another faculty, full-time faculty member to help with this program at the Orchard Ridge campus. Um, Mr. Leith also is at the Orchard Ridge campus, so he's part of the software engineering program, but he focuses mainly on like the networking and database side of things, um, where Dr. Ball and I do more of the, the programming and language sort of thing. So we'll bring in third full-time faculty member, which is awesome, because uh, Mr. Alan Jackson had retired last year and it takes this long to replace somebody apparently um and we'll be back to uh, four full-time faculty members for our program here at the orchard bridge campus i'm super excited so that'll be a lot of fun and we'll see what they want to teach but essentially this is my baby for now um i'll be doing this one here on out and i think it's a lot of fun it's a really cool uh, web tech stack to play with and just you can do a whole lot with it which is really cool and i mean essentially everything runs on the web today not not everything everything but most things that users do run on the web or mobile um desktop applications uh, those sort of things that that run those run businesses usually uh we have a lot of business processes and things that still use full client applications and whatnot or back-end services so a really interesting field uh, i'm a big big fan of software engineering and i can't wait to see what happens all right so do keep in touch uh hang out in the discord right keep keep on chatting with folks um if you got any career tips uh find any places that seem to be hiring um intro level yeah share it with other folks and we'll see how it goes all right it's been a lot of fun hope you have a great semester and next week i'm looking forward to seeing all your final projects all right uh you folks take care oh we should go raid somebody that's right that's the last thing we should do go raid somebody who is around on twitch we could go past her let's see it's part of the fun right why not you guys have any suggestions for who we should raid, or I'll just find somebody around? Uh, let's see. With the five dollar Tulupa Cravens box from Taco Bell, nothing can ruin your bliss. It's value beyond. Um. Limited participating locations for a limited time only. Contact store for prices and items which vary. Drinks exclude freezing. Tax extra. Yeah. We can go hang out with Professor Peter, maybe. He's a lot of fun. Go learn some math. All right, folks. We'll head over that way. Say hi. Everybody take care. Please let me know what I can do to help. I'm uh, looking forward to it. And you take care. I'll see you around.